हेलो फ्रेंड्स सो टुडे इन गायनेकोलॉजी वी स्टडी द डिसफंक्शनल यूटेरिन ब्लीडिंग दिस इज द एबनॉर्मल कंडीशन एंड इट इज आल्सो नोन एज द डीयूबी नाउ फर्स्ट वी सी द डेफिनेशन इट इज डिफाइंड एज अ स्टेट ऑफ अ एबनॉर्मल यूटेरिन ब्लीडिंग विदाउट एनी क्लिनिकली डिटेक्टेबल सिस्टेमिक ऑर्गेनिक एंड इट्रोजेनिक कॉजेस and the heavy menstrual bleeding is defined as the bleeding which interfere with the woman's physical social and material quality of the life now this type of bleeding may be abnormal into the frequency amount and the duration and the diagnosis is based with the exclusion of the organic lesions now the condition of the dysfunctional uterine bleeding is occur due to the dysfunction of the hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis now next we see the pathophysiology physiological mechanism of the hemostasis during the normal menstrual cycle first process is the platelet adhesion the platelet plug formation with the fibrin to seal the blood vessels the third process is the localized vasoconstriction regeneration of the endometrium and biochemical mechanism now during the normal menstruation there is a increase the ratio of the pgf to alpha and pge2 This PGF to alpha causes the vasoconstriction and it reduces the bleeding. Now, the progesterone increase the level of the PGF to alpha from the arachnoid acid and the endothelium is also increased which is vasoconstrictor. Now, in the case of the dysfunctional uterine bleeding, there is a decreased synthesis of the PGF to alpha and it decreases the ratio of the PGF to alpha and PGE2 so the bleeding is continue. now the women who are suffering from the menorrhagia having the low thromboxin level stress anxiety worries and the sexual problem are enough to disturb the normal hormonal level into the body so the abnormal uterine bleeding is with or without the ovulation there is a two types first one is the ovulatory bleeding and second one is the an ovulatory bleeding now we see in detail now into the ovulatory bleeding first condition we see is the polymenorrhea it is seen during the childbirth adolescent abortion premenopausal period and pid in this the follicular development is speeded up so it is resulting into the shortening of the follicular phase it is due to the hyperstimulation of the follicular by follicular stimulating hormone and rarely the luteal phase may be shortened it is due to the premature lysis of the corpus luteum and sometime it is may be due to the stress induced stimulation second condition is the oligomenorrhea it may be met into the puberty and preceding menopausal period it is due to the ovarian unresponsiveness to the endometrium or pituitary dysfunction now next is the functional menorrhagia in this there is a irregular shedding of the endometrium and second one is the irregular ripening of the endometrium is seen now into the an ovulatory bleeding there is a two condition is seen menorrhagia and cystic glandular affection now next we see the investigation first to confirm the menstrual abnormalities from the state of the patient to exclude the systemic iterogenic and organic pelvic pathology and identify the pathology and according to this treatment is given we have to also investigate the blood values hemoglobin platelets count prothrombin time bleeding time clotting time and partial thromboplastin time and the other investigations are the ultrasound and color doppler saline infusion sonography hysteroscopy and laparoscopy now in management first we see the general management the rest should be advised during the bleeding phase symptomatic treatment should be given to the patient and the anemia should be treated by diet and blood transfusion medicinal treatment should be given 
If the bleeding may continue after the medicinal treatment, the surgery should be done. Uterine curettage, endometrial resection, and the hysteroscopy should be done. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, like and subscribe to the channel.